Welcome back. We're talking about the breakdown in talks between Israel and the Palestinians and what's next for the peace process. Joining us from Ramallah is Diana Buta, a former spokesperson for the Palestine Liberation Organization here in Washington. Dan Arbel, a scholar in residence at American University, who is a 25-year veteran of the Israeli Foreign Service. Also with us, Ambassador Mark Ginsburg, who focused on Middle East diplomacy as a member of U.S. President Jimmy Carter's administration. Thanks to all of you for being with us. Diana, let me start with you in Ramallah. So we have unity between Hamas and Fatah. That has not left the Israelis happy. In fact, Israel has given President uh, Mahmoud Abbas a choice. Either you abandon Hamas or there will be no talks. What do you make of that? Well, you know, this is uh, kind of farcical on the part of the Israelis because if you recall before these talks began, this very government and members of this government were saying that they couldn't enter into talks with Mahmoud Abbas because he didn't represent all of the Palestinian people because there was a split between Hamas and Fatah. Now that there's no longer a split between Hamas and Fatah, he once again is saying we can't actually do anything because there, there is reconciliation. The one thing that has been clear throughout is that what Israel consistently chooses is that it wants to have Israeli colonies, it wants to continue to build more settlements. It's not interested in peace. What they're doing is looking for excuses not to have peace rather than reasons to actually have it. Professor Abel, what do you make of that? Israel looking for excuses not interested in peace. I think this is a uh, totally false, uh, clearly uh, Abu Mazen has a choice now to make between Hamas and negotiations with Israel. Uh, Hamas cannot play a serious role in this context of negotiations as long as it adheres to terrorism, does not recognize Israel, does not abide by previous agreements that were uh, made between Israelis and Palestinians. So uh, having Hamas uh, involved in such a process, to my opinion, is a farce and will just be uh, detrimental to any future process. So clearly, Israel has made it clear to Abu Mazen and the Palestinian leadership that it's willing to continue negotiations, but that the Palestinian leadership has to decide what it chooses, whether it wants to deal with Hamas or deal with Israel. There are five weeks now uh, in order for Hamas and Fatah to figure out where they're at. Uh, once that period is over, we'll see what the decision is by the Palestinian leadership. Ambassador Ginsberg, are you optimistic that these talks could restart, or are we seeing what is effectively now a complete freeze of the peace process? Well, there's no doubt, and I was just there, and aware of the fact that the, the talks to get to the talks, to get to the framework, to get to final status, did not achieve uh, the results that Secretary Kerry wanted. But let's also remember, a two-state solution is the only solution that's viable for both parties, number one. Number two, the dust has not settled yet on this latest effort for Hamas and the Palestinian Authority to send the of where they both respect to Oslo and the quartet principles. And so let's not rush to judgment. Number three, there's enough blame to go around on both parties right now with respect to these talks. To, each party needs a timeout now. There was no doubt that there was a significant gap between the parties with respect to getting to a framework agreement that Secretary Kerry wanted. Uh, I think right now what the parties need is timeout, and there's going to be Palestinian elections in six months. Let's wait to see where this leads before everybody locks themselves into concrete and gets themselves into worse positions than they are right now. Okay. Dana, uh, the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu was pretty emphatic in his statement about future talks with the Palestinians. He said that as long as Hamas was involved, there was going to be no talks. So is it time perhaps for a clear and a critical statement from Hamas to say we recognize the state of Israel, we are prepared to enter into talks, with no conditions, we're prepared to enter into a talks in good faith. Well, it's very interesting that you raise this point because there was a period of seven years in which Benjamin Netanyahu and his predecessors had ample opportunity to sit down and negotiate with Abu Mazen and actually end this occupation. Let's remember, this re there was no reconciliation for a period of seven years. It's only now that they're looking at this and they're saying, oh, we can't have uh, any sort of an agreement. Now, I want to get uh, to the issue of recognition. What's important is that Israel itself has not abided by the conditions of, that have been laid down by the quartet. Israel has never recognized Palestine's right to exist. Israel has not agreed to uh, abide by signed agreements. And Israel itself has not renounced terrorism. On the flip side, and I'm not a spokesperson for Hamas, I don't work for them, uh, I don't represent them, 
what we have seen is that we've seen very clearly Khaled Mash'al, the, the, the leader of Hamas, coming out and saying that all that they're looking for is a two-state solution on the 67 borders, and that recognition will come once Israel recognizes Palestine. This is something that we haven't seen from the Israeli side. So I think rather than getting caught up in all of these uh, issues for reasons not to move forward, I think the important thing now is to move forward and for Israel to actually begin to show Palestinians that it is serious about ending its occupation, that it is serious about allowing the Palestinians to live in freedom and not continually putting forward more and more excuses uh, to the Palestinians as to why they should be denied their freedom. Professor Abel, is Israel seriously committed to the negotiations and is still committed to a two-state solution? I think that definitely the government of Israel under Benjamin Netanyahu is very much committed to the two-state solution, very much committed to the Kerry process. Uh, serious negotiations took place over the last nine months. Unfortunately, we see uh, not the results we, uh, we were hoping for. But clearly, uh, what I understand from people that were in the negotiating room, serious issues were discussed. The core issues were all on the table. And Israel was willing to make certain concessions regarding this uh, uh, future arrangements. So clearly, Israel wants uh, peace, wants to see the two-state solution implemented. Unfortunately, Israel does see the Palestinian play a negative role in this and playing a spoiler uh, role. Uh, Israel very much appreciates Secretary Kerry's efforts, uh, admirable efforts, uh, and uh, hope, uh, the hope is that we can find a way in the very near future to somehow resume negotiations in the same context with the same uh, um, U.S. Uh, in involvement, which is crucial to the success of the negotiations. All right, uh, Ambassador Ginsburg, <clears throat> as we heard the professor there say that you know, Israel appreciates the efforts being made by Secretary of State John Kerry to get these two sides together, but there appears to be a, an amount of frustration here in the United States, and I think that was evident when we, it was reported over the last few days that Secretary Kerry said that Israel risks becoming an apartheid state if it doesn't agree to a two-state solution, if this process doesn't move forward. I was at a dinner the other night that Secretary Kerry hosted for Palestinian visiting uh, businessmen. It was quite evident. Look, here's a man who's, as the first thing that he took on as Secretary of State, 19 trips, dedicated his foreign policy goals and objectives to helping to forge an agreement. And let's also be realistic. He made every effort. It was in good faith. But the Israeli government is not constitutionally, when I say that from a government point of view, able to make the concessions necessary given the right-wing extremists that exist within the coalition that Prime Minister Netanyahu has, number one. Number two, with respect to on the Palestinian side, there's no doubt that there are significant disagreements over how to be, get, get to the point where negotiations are going to reach substance. It's as if both parties are talking past each other. One party wants a certain uh, series of discussions on uh, recognitions of, 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 of uh, Israel as a Jewish state. The other party, Palestinians, want a discussion to begin from where Israel determines the Palestinian state to exist, that is, from 67 borders. Until these substantive issues are bridged, everything right now is nothing but showmanship and theatrics. Diana, uh, Ambassador Ginsburg talks about these differences among the Palestinians and how to approach uh, any solution with the Israelis. Uh, what kind of differences are there between the groups? Well, he's alluded to some of them, and the, I think the fundamental one, which is I can summarize, is that Israel fundamentally doesn't recognize that, Palestine, that the Palestinians have equal rights, uh, whether it's in the framework of one state and the idea of equality, or in the framework of two equal states. I've never heard an Israeli leader come out and say that Israel and Palestine can be equal states, and that just in the same way that Israel has a military, that Palestinians can have a military, just in the same way that Israel has sovereignty and independence, so too can the Palestinians. At, at its very core, in the negotiations that I was involved with, every step of the way, Israel refused to recognize the application of international law, and instead put itself above international law and the Palestinians beneath international law. Recipes like that are never going to work. It is a recipe for disaster. And this is why these negotiations have broken down. And this is why I don't think that they will pick up in the future. Unless there is a mind shift within Israel that recognizes Palestinians as equals and a mind shift within the international community that starts to put pressure on Israel to end its occupation, we're going to see this continue on for decades to come.
Okay. I'll come back to you in a moment, Ambassador. We're going to have to take a break right now. When we come back, we'll continue our discussion about the Middle East peace process and the role of the United States. Is it time for another country to intervene? Stay with us. We'll be back in a moment.